Welcome to our service to celebrate Pentecost on an appropriately windy day. I love this special day which celebrates the birth of the church, the gift of the Holy Spirit, enabling the disciples' words to be heard in different languages, sending out God's love into the world. One of the joys is our, of our video service is that we're joined by not only friends in the UK, but also from around the world who worship with us each week. Today our opening prayers are brought to us by Melba Victor, who spent a year living with us in Wilmslow. She lives in Chennai City, previously known as Madras, which is in Tamil Nadu, and worships in the Church of South India. Our reading is brought to us by my aunt Leia Chelgalat, who lives in Nairobi, Kenya. Our intercessions are brought to us by Joan Thompson, who worships with us in Canada. And the Lord's Prayer comes to us by, from Gilda in Chile. Melba, Leia, Joan and Gilda, it's a real joy to have you leading us in worship today, reminding us that we're part of a worldwide family, a worldwide community of faith. Thank you. So let's take a moment to be still, to open our hearts to receive and become aware of God's Holy Spirit present with us. Come, Lord, come. To a world dry and thirsty, God has poured out living water and ignited the flame of the Spirit. Come, let us worship, for the Spirit has come. The Spirit has come. Alleluia. Holy Spirit, power clothed with love. On the day of Pentecost, you filled the lives of those disciples who waited for you. 
You gave them wisdom and energy for living. You transformed their lives. In our eyes, and transform our lives today, we pray. Your breath fills the universe and makes it alive. Your heartbeat lives within every living thing. We praise you, O oh God, for the gift of your spirit. Creative power of God, Holy Spirit of God, we praise you for your presence at work in our lives, in your church, and in the world. Cleansing power of God, purifying spirit of God, forgive and heal us. Enlivening spirit of God, direct and lead us, enthuse and empower us. Come, Holy Spirit, and enter our worship. Come, Lord of life, and fill our lives. Amen. Some of us have joined with thousands of Christians around the world in the last 10 days, praying the words, Thy kingdom come, sharing in the early church tradition of praying between Ascension and Pentecost. As Jesus left the disciples at Ascension, the disciples were told to go and wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. Those 10 days must have seemed like an age of waiting and praying mixed with fear, apprehension, expectation. But then comes the most incredible day, one that leaves them without a shadow of a doubt that God's presence truly was with them and would be powerfully at work amongst them. Our reading today is found from the book of Acts 2, 1 to 12. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost has come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like rush of violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devoid Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in native language of each. Amazing! And astonished, they ask, Are not all these who are speaking Kalilians? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Persians, Medes, Elements, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius, Asia, Phrygia, Bamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya? belongs to Syrians and visitors from Rome, both Jewish and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were emerged and perplexed say to one another, what does this mean? I love watching paragliders. From Pendle Hill in Lancashire, I could watch them waiting waiting for the wind to be just right and then launching off trusting free flying and almost dancing as they let themselves be carried and moved by the wind after days of waiting and praying with expectation the time for trust and free flying had come for the disciples there are moments later in Acts when we hear of the Spirit moving gently, quietly transforming. But on this day, the Spirit comes with power. The root of the Greek word power, dunamis, is the same root word for dynamo, dynamite, dynamic. And as they trust, they are lifted off their feet. 
they are lifted up out of their fear and propelled forward, equipped with new courage. Peter, an uneducated fisherman, finds himself speaking to thousands with new passion and the conviction of faith. People from many nations who had gathered in Jerusalem for the first of the harvest festivals all heard the disciples in their own language and were amazed. It marks a truly significant moment as the time began for the message of God's love to be taken out into all the world. It was no longer just the disciples' story. It was no longer to be a message for their own people, but a message of love and grace and salvation for all people. And through the Holy Spirit, each person would be enabled to know the presence of God with them. The way in which the disciples, who up until this point had relied on the physical presence of Jesus with them, went out across the Mediterranean and into the world with the gospel of Christ with such passion is the greatest evidence for the resurrection and it changed the world. I'm struck, I'm struck by the fact that the disciples knew their purpose to go out and share the great news of transforming grace, news of forgiveness, liberation and healing. Good news, great news. They knew that their purpose was to become like Christ Jesus, to actually do what Jesus did. They knew that the teaching of Jesus meant that they could be one with the Father, with Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. And they knew that they were called to live in God's kingdom ways. They knew their purpose. They prayed together with expectation and they were open to receive, respond and move with the impulse of the Holy Spirit. And so the church was born. They had all been together in one place and they remained connected as a community. Pentecost and the gift of the Holy Spirit comes not for individual experience and empowerment, but for the benefit of the whole, the building up of the community for the kingdom of God. It's important to celebrate and remember these beginnings of the church and learn from them even if our experience might be of the quieter, gentler movements of the Spirit. At this time of flux and uncertainty and change, let us keep praying, waiting and trusting, open to the flow and energy of the Holy Spirit to guide and shape us, to move us onwards without fear bringing us closer together as the body of Christ so that we might be a channel of God's love and grace throughout the world. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Let us pray. Spirit of fire, 
inflame in us a passion for justice and equality, that we may be cleansed of prejudices and proclaim your freedom boldly, caressing your earth with humility and love. Spirit of power, hold us in our powerlessness, that we may know your strength and become a voice for the voiceless, healing for the wounded and empowerment for the weak. Spirit of wisdom, be within us, gently guiding us along right paths, and be within our leaders, that they may have the vision to work for the well-being of the global community. Spirit of peace, bring healing where there is discord within us and around us. We pray for the nations, particularly praying for peace and justice in Palestine and Israel. Spirit of compassion, infuse us with your longings for wholeness and happiness, that we may reach out to those who are hurting and troubled, enfolding one another with your love. Spirit of gentleness, release in us all that we are afraid of, that we may know your acceptance of us and freely accept and embrace others. Spirit of comfort, draw near to us in all grief, confusion and pain. In your graciousness bring hope, consolation and renewal. We especially pray for all who are suffering from COVID and all who are working in health care around the world. Holy Spirit of God, fill the world with your peace, fill the church with your purpose, and fill us with your power for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. The Lord's Prayer is spoken for us in Spanish by Senora Gilda Bravo from La Tercera Iglesia, the Third Methodist Church of Concepcion. Gilda, who watches our service every week, begins by greeting us in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and tells us that she is speaking to us from Chile's 8th region. Los saludo a todos en el amor del Señor. Eh, le estoy hablando de Chile, eh, Concepción, la octava región. Eh, me ha tocado eh, hablar sobre el Padre Nuestro. Eh, Padre Nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad como en el cielo, también en la tierra. El pan nuestro de cada día, dánoslo hoy, perdona nuestra deuda, como nosotros perdonamos a nuestros deudores. No nos deje caer en tentación, mas líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria, por todos los siglos. Amén. Thank you to Melba, Leia, Joan and Gilda and to all who have led us in our service for Pentecost. And thank you to you for joining with us wherever you are. It really is a joy to gather together to worship God. 
I hope that you will be with us again next week for Trinity Sunday. We also have an evening of sharing poetry and faith um, tonight so if you're interested in joining us please do drop me a line and now a closing prayer God of power may the boldness of your spirit transform us may the gentleness of your spirit lead us and may the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. God bless you all.